Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Laurie Mega, founder of Mega Consulting Editorial Services, and I'm a professor of media and social media writing. And this is my Journalism 101 series. In this video, we're going to be going over headlines that get clicks. So let me just throw this into present mode. There we go. So headlines that get clicks. Headlines are super important in article writing. It's probably one of the most important skills that you can develop aside from actually writing the article. Because you can write the most wonderful article in the world. You can write Pulitzer Prize winning stuff. But if you don't have a headline that gets people to click on it, nobody's going to see it. So your headline is what gets people reading. It's what gets that information out there. So your headline better be phenomenal. No pressure or anything. But don't worry, I'm going get, to get you through this. So let's first talk about some of the different kinds of headlines that you can write. And I'm going to put examples, uh, links to examples, in the description uh, for all of these um, topics that I cover in this presentation. Um, so look in the description for articles that I think have great headlines and articles that I think don't have such great headlines. So here are just a few of the different kinds of headlines you can have. Um, hard news headlines, for example, tend to be more truncated, shorter, very informational, just get the information out there um, to get people's attention. Um, and they tend to be truncated. When I say that, I mean sometimes words are taken out um, to make them shorter, and that comes from way back, way back in newspaper writing when um, articles tended to be cut to fit around the ads. So the headline couldn't take up too much space, so they would take out, you know, articles or sometimes um, uh, even a verb here or there to make it um, shorter. And you have to be careful with that, and we will go over that. Um, feature headlines is another kind. Those tend to be more prosaic, um, and there uh, there is a video on feature writing as well as a video on hard news writing, so check those out if you are not sure uh, what I'm talking about there. Um, they tend to be more of a sentence structure and they can be a little bit longer. Uh, obituary, obituary headlines can be more poetic. They tend to highlight um, a really great thing about the person who died, unless it's you know a serial killer or something, then they will note that. It's the notable thing uh, of the person who died. Uh, listicle headlines. Your listicle is those articles, you know, 10 vacations you have to take in your lifetime, um, five ways to winterize your pool. Um, there's always a number. It's always set up as in sort of a list format like that. I have a video on listicles, too, so you can learn how to write those. Um, so check that out on my, on my page. And those are very problem-solving. Even if they're for entertainment-only articles, it's still solving a problem, and that problem is making your audience not bored anymore. So 10 fabulous dresses that wowed people on the red carpet is still solving a problem. It's solving the problem of boredom. And then blog headlines is another kind of, these are just a few. There are tons of ways to write headlines. Um, and blog headlines tend to be more personal, a little more prosaic, like feature headlines, um, very hooky. You're going to want to pull out the million dollar um, verbs and adverbs and adjectives for this to get people really interested. Very descriptive. And again, this is just a few different ways uh, that you can write headlines for a few different kinds of stories. I would recommend actually going to the websites that you read regularly and even some websites you don't read regularly and see which headlines grab your attention and which don't. Which do you click on and which do you pass over? And then look and see if there's a pattern there. What are they doing that's getting you interested, that makes you want to click? And start emulating that in your own headline writing. Now, one of the things that um, I will say throughout my this entire video series, and it's important with headline writing too, is you have to know your audience. Um, and I'm sorry, my head is cutting this off a little bit, but I'll read I'll read it out loud for you. Uh, so every writer is a bit of a statistician and a bit of a psychologist. And by that, I mean we are tapped into the demographics and the psychographics 
of the audience that we're trying to reach with our article. So you can't just write an article and throw it out there. You have to know who you're writing it for. Who are you talking to? And then once you know who that person is, once you have a general idea, you need to dig down and get real information on them. How old are they? What gender do they identify with? What do they do for a living? What are their hobbies? What is their political affiliations? What are their family situations? Uh, what are their religious beliefs? These are all getting into psych psychographics. It may even get down to what's their favorite color? What do they do on a Sunday afternoon? Um, how many children do they have? Do they have any children at all? These are all things that you need to know to write the kind of article and the kind of title that will get their attention. Because once you know who they are, you know how to talk to them and the kinds of words and the kinds of things that will get them interested in writing, in reading your article. So you know who your audience is. Now you're going to write your, your headline, but what should your headline be? What are the things that it should include. First of all, it should be eye-catching, and I've been saying this throughout the presentation. You should be using the words and the hooks, as we call them, to get people's attention. So instead of saying something like, uh, a fire broke out on Elm Street and destroyed five houses, terrible headline, but you kind of get the point. You, you you would say something like, fire raged through five houses on Elm Street. You use that real descriptive word, raged, right? Um, instead of saying, five ways to winterize your pool, you could say, um, five, five life-saving hacks for keeping your pool safe in the winter. You're creating that sense of urgency, that sense of, whoa, I need to know this. Um, and this is where FOMO comes in, too. Fear of missing out. You need to put that urgency into your headline to make people say, if I don't click on this, I'm going to miss out on something super important. Your headline should be promising. And by that, I mean it has to create, it has to make a promise that your article, the content of your article, then fulfills. So it's the it has to give enough information, just enough, to promise your audience something interesting and useful and helpful to them, even if it's just entertainment, that you will fulfill when they read the article. So in that article, five dresses that wowed the Oscars, that's your promise. I promise my audience I'm going to show them some amazing dresses they cannot miss out on, or their lives will just be a little bit dimmer for it. Um, five ways to winterize your pool and save it this this December and January um, is I promise you in this article you will learn how to keep your pool from being completely destroyed in the winter and so that's the promise you're making through your title through your headline it has to be informative to a degree so you want to give just enough information to get people interested, but you don't want to give away the whole article, right? Because then people will just scroll by. If you give all the information in, in, your, in your headline, which I see all the time, by the way, then people are just going to say, oh, okay, that happened, and keep going. It should be concise. Now, titles are getting, I keep saying titles, headlines are getting longer and longer, I've noticed. I've even seen headlines that are two sentences long. That's a lot, and that goes back to giving away too much information in the headline. I personally think they should be more concise, shorter, uh, just enough information to get that click and get people into the article. And they should be definitely free of spelling and grammatical errors. This is something that will turn your audience off immediately, because if you have spelling and grammatical errors in your headline, in anywhere in your article, that signals to them that you didn't care enough to go back and make sure that it was correct grammatically and spelling-wise. And if you didn't care enough about that, you probably didn't care enough about your fact-checking, your quote sourcing, or any of the information in your article. So then you have lost the trust of your audience. And the trust of your audience is key in getting them to read your content. And I go over that more, actually, in... Um, in another video on good content writing. 
So what should your headline not be? Well, it shouldn't be dull. I think we've covered that. A boring article will not, or a boring, boring, boring headline will not get the click. It shouldn't be wordy. Don't do the two-sentence headline, please. Um, it should not be riddled with spelling and grammatical states. It shouldn't be meandering. And by that, I mean just get to the point. Go straight to the point with your title. Don't try to draw people in with a long he headline. It won't work. And it shouldn't be unrelated to the article. That's where clickbait comes in. Don't create a headline that has absolutely nothing to do with your article. Not only will it turn your audience off, but it will dock you with Google. Google will actually crawl your article and say, this article has nothing to do with this headline. Down in the ranks. Finally, make sure your headlines translate well to social and mobile. Social, on social, when you post, you might even actually just be creating a new headline because it should be shorter. It should follow the rules of that particular platform. So Twitter, you know, only 280 characters. Um, Facebook, it can be a little longer, but just know you're going to get that cut off and that dot, dot, dot. So just make sure it's not getting cut off in a weird place. Um, and it should be mobile friendly. Most people get their news and their information on a mobile device these days. So you don't want a headline that's so long it's like taking up half the screen, right? You want to keep it nice and short and sweet. So make sure you're creating that headline that works really well for wherever it is that your audience is getting the information. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, and then on mobile. So no unwordy headlines. I think I've made this point pretty clear. The longer the headline, the more information you're giving away. Plus, wordiness just gets in the way. It just gets in the way of your point. Make your writing as clear and, as I like to say, as invisible as possible. You don't want people hung up on your words. You want them hung up on your information. So if you start throwing in, you know, those long, super academic words or, you know, you're making it a two-sentence long headline, you're going to lose your audience. Um, another note on clickbait, don't do it. Simple as that. You will get docked by Google uh, and most other search engines, and you will lose your audience. Um, I think you know what I mean by clickbait. You know, the, the ones that you see at the bottom of articles, you know, these 12 weird ways clear out your colon. Yeah, you might get a couple of clicks, but it's usually to a fluffy article, and nobody trusts it. And then one more note about truncated titles. And again, I am going to have examples of everything I'm talking about in the description. So check out the description for examples. Um, you have to be careful when you're truncating a title because you could end up making it confusing. Um, so you have to be very, very clear um, in what you're trying to say and make sure it's conveying the right message. And that means reading it out loud, which I recommend for all writing. Read it out loud. See how it hear, how it sounds. Does it sound right? Does it make sense? Otherwise, your audience is going to get tripped up. Um, so if you have to take out an article, a, the, if you have to um, have a few different names in the, in the headline, make sure that the action is attributed to the right name. Things like that. And again, I will have an example in the description. Okay, so let's do a little headline writing and see if you have the chops to do it, which I'm sure you do. Um, so if you took a look at my hard news writing video, you will recognize this example. This is the article we came up with um, when we were writing our hard news piece. If you haven't looked at it yet, check it out. It's a great video for um, starting with the basics of hard news writing. So this is the article we came up with. A five alarm fire forced 20 people to evacuate their homes last night. The fire broke out on Cedar Street at 1 a.m. Uh-oh, Laurie, you have a typo. Oops. Chief Brady said, it took us about six hours to put the fire out. Thankfully, no one was hurt. Cedar Street will be closed until the fire inspector can declare the scene safe. The firefighters also rescued several pets, including an iguana. 
Now notice I found a typo. These are things you want to look out for. And they happen to the best of us. I will just say that. Um, especially these days with 24-hour news cycle and everything going so fast and so fast. You want to, this is a great example of me not double checking my work. And you definitely want to double and even triple check your work before you put it out there. Because these are the kinds of things that your audience will stumble upon in your articles and then say, ooh, yikes, maybe this information isn't trustworthy. Lucky for us, this is all made up, so it doesn't have to be trustworthy. So here's the article. Take a minute to read it again. See if you can come up with a, t uh, with a good headline. Go ahead and pause if you need to. I'll, I'll wait. Okay, how'd you do? I came up with some of my own, just to give you some examples. And if yours is different, that's totally fine, um, as long as it makes sense as a headline. But this is what I came up with. And these are kind of different examples based on different articles you could write from that information. So here's one that's just totally hard news, informational. Five alarm fire shuts down Cedar Street. And this is an example of a truncated one because I didn't say a five alarm fire. And I used um, a numeral. A lot of times you will see in titles they use numerals just to make it shorter rather than write out, write out the number, even though usually below, below 10, nine, 1 through 9, you would write out. In headlines, you would not. Uh, five alarm fire shuts down Cedar Street. Five alarm fire rages for six hours. This is a little more hooky, right? This is a little more uh, sensational if that's what you're going for, if that's what your audience likes. Uh, Cedar Street closed after overnight fire. This is definitely for your commuter audience, right? Cedar Street is closed. You can't take Cedar Street. Residents displaced after five alarm fire. This is a little bit more of a humanitarian story. Now we've got the human side in here. This might be even a little bit more of a feature story if this is a bigger story. Uh, fire department takes six hours to extinguish fire. This might be something with a bit of an agenda behind it, right? If somebody's not happy with the fire department or somebody is happy with the fire department but feels like they need more funding. There's a little bit of more of an agenda behind that. You can do this with headlines. And then the final one, which is a little cut off, several pets, including an iguana, need a home after five alarm fire. This is a little bit more of a, you know, this is something maybe you would see on the blog for the MSPCA uh, or something like that where they're trying to drum up interest in these animals. So these are different ways that you can write a headline for the same story to reach different audiences. Now you'll notice in all of these, I capitalized everything. Um, but these smaller articles and prepositions. And that's typically what you do. Um, some newspapers still capitalize only the first word and then everything else is lowercase. What I'm seeing a lot now of is everything is capitalized. And that's because news is going out so quickly, nobody has time to edit for, is this capitalized, is this lowercase, I don't know, so they just make everything capitalized. So it, that depends on the publication, but those are the different ways that you can um, format a headline. So that is our presentation, my presentation uh, on headlines. Um, I hope you liked it. Definitely leave a comment, share, um, subscribe if you want to watch more videos. And again, there'll be examples in the description of all these different concepts that I went over. And I hope I will see you uh, around for my next videos. So thanks for watching.